Hi there, I'm Mike Mike 37 and I'm going to show you how to make a head morph in the Dragon Age toolset. First thing you need to do is File, New, Morph. You'll be presented with a light grey screen with a grid on it. Um, this is because you need to choose a race for your morph, that is the first step you need to take. And that can be done with this little white drop down here where it's asking us to choose base. Bring that down, you should get a selection of about 8 to choose from. We've got here human male and female, dwarf male and female, elf male and female, canary male and child. Or oh, kid, I suppose K might be for kid. Uh, we're going to use a human male. And I'll take a second to load. First thing I tend to do is to hit the randomize button. This just helps get it away from um, your fairly boring and generic kind of guy into something a little bit more interesting. So we'll go with him. He, he looks like he might be kind of interesting. At this point it's a good idea to save. I know it's very early but um, this is worth mentioning simply because um, saving is always important. So I'll hit save and I'll um, save it wherever I like. Now this is the um, MRH file which is uh, the morph file that the toolset uses that you can go back to at any time to make changes to the head easily in the toolset. I'll get onto the MOR file um, which is the other format for head morphs um, shortly. Um, but for now, this is just um, this can go anywhere. So I'll, I'm dumping it in my desktop because um, I'm feeling cl I'm cluttered like that. Um, so we'll just call it um, character tutorial. Now that name is actually quite important because that is the name that will be given to your MOR file, and it's it's set there. Um, unlike a lot of other resources which set it somewhere in the object inspector in the properties, um, this one will actually dictate what your um, file is called. But don't worry too much about that because it doesn't actually make much difference at the end of the day as long as it's something meaningful to you so we'll hit save and we'll get to work on our character right the uh, obvious thing here is he's he's bald so um, it's nice to give him the hair that you want um, so you get an idea of what he might look like at the end of the day so uh, hair can be found in the second tab under part selection and we see here hair now if you like you can uh, go to the uh, builders wiki which has um, lots of uh, screenshots of hair and beards and different colours and things. Um, that can be kind of useful. There's not too many to look through so I'm just going to browse through until I find something I like. Um, so if we click on the hair box and click on the three ellipses we bring up this little um, little bunch here and we're presented with all the hair which is suitable for a human male. Um, you won't be presented with hair which isn't suitable for your character because it probably won't fit. So here's the human male hair, and we'll go with, um, I don't know, I'll just, I'll just pick one. Yeah, sure, that one will do. Um, we'll even give him a beard. These are a little bit more descriptive in their names. No, they're not at all. They're just one, two, three, four, five. I thought they were more descriptive, I guess not. Um, no, I don't like that too much. Um, you also have the option, um, that's nicer, of going with uh, stubble, which uh, can look okay with a beard, but usually you kind of want one or the other. Um, stubble can be found... Um, here we've got a few selections for them. So brow and stubble, it's in the second tab there, and bring it down. Um, I just wanted to get that hair on him so you can kind of see what he might look like at the end of the day. That's usually my first step, but now I'll just go through all the different um, tabs one by one. Okay, skin colour, we can use this to change um, what colour skin he's got. So if you don't like the standard sort of white colour, you can go with something a bit darker or a bit more tanned. Um, this guy's obviously caught a bit of sun. Um, you can give them different makeups. Generally, that's just for the ladies, but I would think they probably work. Um, change the skin texture. This can be useful if you want to make him uh, old. We have here a base skin texture and a blend skin texture. We can use the blend to actually um, mix two textures together. So uh, if you like, you can. This is just going to blend all of them together. You can make him old all over, or you can, if you want to, just give him a, a furrowed brow. Then um, that'd be. Let's see now. Where would that be? Left forehead and right head forehead. There we go. He looks like he's he's seen a little bit of stress in his time. Poor guy. Um, and you can change things like uh, skin type, which would be um, for kind of it's another another appearance again. You might like to try out. A lot of these is just good practice to try them out, see what they do. So that's the material tab. It changes the textures really. It's the main purpose there. The uh, part selection is where we change the models. We've you saw me changing the hair and, and beard model, but it also has some other stuff too. You can change the uh, eye um, colour and texture there. 
Um, I'm really just reading these out, so it's so to be honest, it's not worth me going through all of them. But tattoo is also in this section here. The tattoo mask. Um, if you think of a tattoo like having parts, and you don't have to use all of the parts, I'll just pick one here. And to begin with, it's using none of them. So until you uh, actually slide up one of these channels, and you get four to choose from. Every tattoo has four parts. So you slide those up, you won't see anything. So we'll slide a couple up just to give you a demonstration. Usually you wouldn't use all four at once because, well, he looks kind of strange with so many tattoos on him. You typically only use one at a time. Um, and to be honest with you, I'm not really sure why they're all on one um, texture. It seems like a very peculiar way to save space or, or whatever resources, but, you know, that's what they've gone with. Um, so we've got a um, sprout... Oh, stubble color here which we'll leave it black because I guess he's, he's got black hair now uh, and we'll give him I don't know um, a bit of a goatee let's see how that looks like. that's a bit rubbish that um, bit of a mustache there we go so uh, you can see it can kind of work okay with the beard but um, the beard is very much a solid kind of entity and the the, bra the stubble and eyebrows are just sort of um, textures sitting on top so they do can look a little awkward next to each other so be aware of that Moving on then, feature selection. You've got things like the shapes here. Now, before I like to, I mean, there are a lot of tabs now on the different shapes. Before I do those, I like to try out the uh, unique shapes here to see if um, we can get a look, um, something like what we want using these. These tend to be good ways to change lots of things on mass and get an idea for how your whole character might look. They also actually let you change things further than you might be able to with other other sliders. So if you make them look a little bit more like Alistair, you can kind of see it gives them a squinty appearance. Um, Daveth will give him a kind of warped kind of face kind of thing going on. So lots of, these tend to make lots of quite interesting changes quite quickly and um, you can see this is probably one of the best ways to actually make those changes to begin with and from there fine tune it. It's usually easier to do it that way than try and figure it out um, one at a time. So try these ones out and see if you like any of them. We'll, we'll <laughs> this guy's feeling kind of sorry for himself feel quite bad. <laughs> but there we go. We'll go with something like that. Um, another place that do, does sort of massive changes all at once is uh, these change the nose all at once and the eyes all at once to give you something, uh, a big big change altogether. If you find these are greyed out it's because you're using um, some incompatible um, morphs together. So in this case I'm using one of the unique shapes morphs which prevents me from using these other ones but these are also similar to those unique shapes. They will allow you to and change lots of things all at once. So here I'll just give him, I don't know, um, the eastern nose kind of gives him a bit of a hook nose, so that might be something we want. Yeah, that looks good. We'll go with that. Again, it's greyed out all these other ones because they're not compatible with one another, and let's change his eye shape and make him a bit more squinty or something. What's that doing there? Let's make him a little saggy. Saggy eyed. Wide eyed. I don't even know what that is but they're doing stuffs. So uh, give those a go. And you should go through all of these. Um, I'm running through them pretty quickly here, but all of these from nose, mouth, eyes, uh, cheeks, jaw, uh, yeah, teeth, ears, neck, brows, all of those will change the shape of the face in a more kind of fine-tuned way. Um, if, you, if you're not happy with a certain thing, then you'll jump into one of those tabs and change them. The view settings um, can be useful if you want to see them in a different light. Uh, I recommend the New Day one there, and I think New Day 2 is also okay to see them in different lights. The other ones tend to make them pretty black, but um, we'll stick with New Day, uh, which is a very flat and even lighting situation. And that's really, I think, all there is to show in the head morphs. Um, best thing to do is to have a play around with these little sliders and see what you can get going. Um, so the final thing remains to just export him. Um, this is the means by which the game understands the uh, head morph. As it is now with the MRH file, which I said before, it doesn't matter where you put it, that um, is not readable by the game, but it is the file that you can change easily. When you export it to the MOR file, that becomes a, a game-readable file format, so the game will understand that but the toolset is not so good at understanding that and won't let you um, change those easily. So all these sliders and this nice interface where you can see what's going on, um, you won't be able to use that. So it's good to hang on to both, and it's also good to pass them on to anyone who's using them, um, both of them. 
so that they can throw it into their game if they wish, or um, or they can uh, tweak it before they do so. Um, so to export him, right click on the um, tab at the top there, slide down to export and choose post to local. Now this is where it's important which module you're in. If you're in your own module um, it'll have a slightly different export location to the single player module. So I'm in the single player module and I'll show you where that is first of all. Um, if I can find the right one, here we go. This is my uh, my documents, Bioware, Dragon Age folder. You might have seen this one before. Because I'm in single player it's going to have gone to packages, core, override, tool set export. And here we can see uh, character tutorial .mor. Now that's prefixed it with a hm underscore because that's human mail. It does that by default um, so remember that when you're looking for it when you uh, come to assign it to a creature. Um, and character tutorial was the same name that I gave to my save file, my mrh save file. Um, however if, you've, uh, if you're in an add-in, your own module uh, and not in single player in the tool set, then you'll need to go to um, add-ins, uh, whatever the name of your add-in is here, I've obviously got quite a few, um, so let's just go to uh, this one here, um, and then you need to go into core, override, toolset export, same as with the packages, um, core, override, toolset export, it's kind of the same place, and it will have appeared, and that's really all there is to say about it, so uh, have fun, hope you make uh, some, some nice head morphs, good luck.